song, baby. Big show, big show. It's really real right now. Mr. DL. Two, two, two. Two, two, two. Who's off? Yo, we are here. The Danger Zone podcast number 66 with 66. Yeah, big show. Mr. DL. And Chef Tanya Nicole. Welcome back, everybody. And today we got another special hey, guest. Hey, listen. Very, very special. We're glad guest. to be here. Um, you know, we, we you know, we, we're glad that y'all could join us 66 weeks, man, and counting. But today we have a special guest, man. You know, um, my man 1000 Grand uh, from the legendary Foo Snickers, Chip Foo. What's good, brother? What's happening, brother, man? How you been? Uh, I'm good, man. I'm good, man. You've been a long time. It's crazy, too, because, you know, in the in the times when we were, you know, in the come up in the groups and gangs and everything else, you would always see each other at different places. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So then we had that lull, like, with all these years. But even with me just recently seeing you on um, on uh, Instagram or something, I'm spitting. And mm-hmm. I was like, damn, that shit is still dope. That shit was pure. Like, like I'm, you know, I'm looking at it like that. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? There's nothing, yeah. it's it's nothing out of touch. That shit is, I, I, that got me. I just seen it, Bahamadia too, because, um, you know, we good too. So I was speaking to something about her at the same time. Then I saw that thing. I'm like, wow, here we go. But, um, yo, just tell the people that, you know, get them caught up, man, on Chip Foo. You know what I'm saying? Uh, how this all began and, and, and um, you know, and why you mad and what, what's going on with you, you know what I mean? Uh, right now, I mean, basically, you know, uh, group Fushnickens came out, uh, gold and platinum album, did a lot of writing for different other groups, did some writing mm-hmm. for Shaquille O'Neal. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. After that, we decided to disband. Mm-hmm. You know, started my production company and my video company, mm-hmm. and also my school initiative called Math, Music Appreciation or Time of Healing. We've been in schools for 10 years. Well, um, got yeah. to got to a point where I was just like, yo, let me just I, was, I I didn't put out any music because I was still bound by contract by um Jive well, publishing because of Zamba or whatever. So I never really put out any um, uh, music. Mm. I was wait until that contract was up. So now that the contract is up, now everybody's seeing me drop stuff and 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 you mm. know freestyles or whatever. And it was just like, well, you know, why you you know it took so long for you to do anything? And I was like, I couldn't because. I was still bound by contracts. So I had to wait them contracts out. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, so, right. where you where you actually from? You know, where did it stop for you as an MC? You know, uh, I started for me in, in Brooklyn, New York. Um, okay. One of my brother's good friends was um, educated rapper mm-hmm. from UTFO, but at the time they were called the Jamalot Crew, and mm. they they actually. Um, DJed for my brother's 16th birthday party. Mm. And I asked to get on the mic. An educated rapper was like, you know, at the time was like, all right, no man, I'm gonna give you the mic. Let me see what you're gonna do. Mm. The mic, and then I tore it up. And then he just right. was telling my brother, yo, you need to keep your eye on that little one right there, because he kind of different with his, you know what I'm saying? So that yeah. that was the beginning for me. And then from there, I was going to different um block parties and jumping on the um you know the reggae sets you know like at, mm-hmm. a, at age 11 12 so mm-hmm. i was tearing it down from then basically in like in the reggae scene and then that's why you know that's how the style developed being a mash between you know both of them you get me so right 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 it's it's crazy because so at the time you know you had a a, a, a lot of syllable a lot of words in, in your right. delivery and and it's pretty fast, so you know, speed and accuracy. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So certain dudes who would rhyme that way. So you kinda had to like you respect the flow, but you also was like, man, they dope and what they saying, it's not gibberish, they spitting. Right. But it's you know, I like I I say it like someone like you at the time, because even though you were in a group, right, it always to us and then even a lot of others, such as some groups are so you still you stood out, you know, right. in, uh, in the group. But then it would be uh, other guys like my man from the, you know, uh, uh, what, is, uh, what is the other crew? Poor Righteous Teachers, you know what right. I'm saying? Uh, why? Why? You know what I mean? There was a few guys that had that flow where it was like, even Trench, you Trench know, you had your I was going to say Trench, yeah. You know what I mean? That was, it was rapid, accurate, but it was like, damn, it was, it was that, it was different. Whereas I always felt like, though, that style, which I believe I'm true to it, that 
it, would, it never goes out of style, so right. to speak. You know what I mean? Like, you always do it. And then when I, um, when you were in the group, Fool Snickens, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I just had to speak on that. So where did this, uh, I, I might know, but for the people, so where did this thing, Fool Snickens, come from? And like, why was that? I mean, I seen dude with the little, uh, with the, the hat, the little straw hats, and little key looking, you know what I mean? So, it's, I mean, where did this derive from, you know? Nah, it was more so, um, how could I put it? First and foremost, the name Fushnikins means fusion. All three of us fused our styles to mm. come up with our own unique sound. Um, mm. And the, the karate geese was more so uh, a, a take from the karate movies when it, you know, when it came to discipline and focused on what we supposed to be doing, which was, all right, we're going to get in this industry. We're going to fuck this shit up, do what we supposed to do and mm. make sure that, you know, history is made, you know, being of of West Indian immigrants, you know, they, they did what they did to get here to this country. So to have us as kids, you know, we, we are looked at as an extension of them. So it wasn't about place. So that those, those geese more so were more so about keeping us focused. You get me? Right. Well, you know, being a, uh, studying martial arts for a few years young. So I understood the, the focus part of it, if nothing else, but the flow just like you, you stood out in that group to me, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm like, you know, so at that time it was voices and in and, and the nineties and what have you, and styles and different things that kind of set people apart that kind of got us deals. Like, you know, at that time you, they, they were looking for the difference, not the redundancy of what it is today. You know what right. I'm saying? So at that time, um, we're listening to everything. And next thing you know, you guys is doing pretty good um and doing your thing. And then all of a sudden, you know, we get a we get a fourth member, you know, like a seven foot. You know, I'm a member of the group. I'm like, damn, this nigga's type big. You know, he, he's, but, he, but he embraced the shit out of the group and what y'all, he said it was his favorite group at the time. You know, yeah. I'm OG, so I remember that. Right, so right. it's like, it's like, so how did that come about? And then, you know, that was not even put you in more life because it was the big fool. You know what I mean? Right. Um, I think th that was a blessing in disguise because first and foremost, you know, everything was happening for him at the time. Yeah. Mm. Round draft and everything. And I think yeah. for him, let's put it this way, for me, meeting him and, and him saying, you know, uh, me being one of his favorite MCs, the first thing that for me, I'm not a sports dude in, in no way, shape or form. Right. Yeah, Yankees had on. <laughs> I got a Yankee yes. hat on because it, no, it matches saying. my clothing and my wardrobe. We good. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people so, you understand. You know what I'm saying? Um, so for me, my other two partners was like, yo, you, you, are you understanding what's happening? This is first round draft pick. And then my dad was telling me how important it was. And I was uh, like, all right, let me go and meet with him. So when I met with him, he was like, yo, he's into hip hop or whatever. And when I went to his crib, the first thing I saw him do was DJ before he even rhymed. Right, using blending records and and scratching and all sorts of stuff. So yeah. I was like, he's really like a, a true hip hopper, you know what I'm saying? But his his thing is is, is basketball. Mm -hmm. We went to the studio. What's up, Doc? Was already done, but we could not put What's Up Doc out because at the time you had the um the Jordan movie was out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Space they Jam. If, they said if, right, they said that if we put it out, it'd be a conflict of interest. So what we did is we we kept the record and we was waiting until you know that movie came out and it, it had its time. Yeah. So That's since the record was there, I said, Yo, Shaq, why don't you get on this record? Because I'm thinking Space Jam's basketball player on this record. Yeah. Right. Kind of like this, the the thing with Jordan and, and Bugs Bunny or whatever. So I was like, Yo, jump on this record. So you know, walking into the studio and him, he pulled again. He pulled out this piece of paper. It looked it had mad rips on it and like tape. You get me? Yeah. So then mm -hmm. he started in the booth like he he was preparing for his time. And that's mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? That he yeah. spit it, he spit it with conviction. He didn't spit it like he needed help. You get me? Did so uh, the right. only he actually helped him with was overdubs at the end and him finding his voice. Did that's um it. did he call himself Shaq Fu already or was that something that came no. when Okay. That came after, so he was like, "Yo, my Shaq Fu," and I was like, "Well, yeah." Right. Then that, yeah. that shit, yeah, that shit came. He was like, "Yeah." Sure. And then it became a video <laughs> game, up. Shaq Fu. Yeah, then it became a video game. It became yeah, a, yeah. Um, a radio station. It became a lot of stuff. So for me, <laughs> it's like, at the end of the day, it was more so about giving the person a chance and the opportunity. Mm. I mean, because you know, 
in life, you would always want somebody to do that for you. But it just happened to be him. And I was like, all right, go for yours. You know what I'm saying? It was mm-hmm. kind of hard for the engineer to mic him or whatever. But once no question. And no he, question. He, wrote that, he wrote that verse, but you say you uh, later in life wrote other verses for him. Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, I did. But I think what it was with, with Shaq was if he he would be, he'd start stuff. And you could just help him guide him along the line and he'll finish it. Because remember, at that time, he was still trying to find his voice. Yeah. Yeah. And he mm-hmm. found his voice. Like, right now, you can't tell him nothing on the yeah. mic. <laughs> right. right. On the mic. Nobody don't got to tell him nothing. Nobody don't got to coach him through nothing. Yeah. He got he found his voice, his pocket, mm-hmm. and everything. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and that's a beautiful thing. But in the very beginning, he was still trying to find his voice and, you know, certain pockets that, that would suit him. Yeah. Right. That's crazy. So, we... When you guys, you just had the, you know, the gee element and such. Mm-hmm. And uh, with, with, was anybody taking any any martial arts or just with I that? took martial arts. Okay, so, okay. I took so, martial arts. I never really wanted to tell nobody nothing because I said right. this, that certain heads that took martial arts, you'd hear about it. Like, you know, the J. Ru, mm-hmm. the, the damages and then yeah. Afu mm-hmm. and everybody was doing it. I was just like, nah, I ain't gonna let nobody know. You know that I'm skilled at that. I was like, all right, let it just be on some microphone stuff. But yeah, it's it's crazy you say that because like when I did the militia video, so I you know I studied a few years, you know, but it was never what what that was was more like a, a black exploitation film back in the day where right, you know, right. I'm, I'm dressed up but I'm, I'm fighting. Like right. they didn't tell me the moves I'm doing and what I'm doing. They didn't uh-huh. tell me that. Like I just knew like okay, I'm I'm Jim Kelly in them right now. You know what I mean? So I, I broke it down. And now the funny thing, like Jay Ru and um, Apu and them dudes, them dudes started taking martial arts after that shit came out. You see what I'm know. saying? So they were from, that. <laughs> yeah, they were like, they, they was hood. Them was my dudes, but they was hood. So they might have thought, you know, uh, had some hood uh, karate or some shit. But when that shit came came out, dudes was taking classes, like, like dudes, you know what I mean? But I used to always be on some shit, that's my man's. So I'd be on some shit like, yo, Let's see if that shit worked. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because cause I do my shit, but cool, we, never, <laughs> we never did nothing. But they people had that element like, yo, these dudes was doing karate, and the videos was dope because mm-hmm. they really had um, they really had those producers, those those dudes that produced and directed uh, uh karate films. Yeah, they right. were the ones directing them dudes' videos. You see mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, speaking what's up, man? Um, speaking of the karate. The karate films, I know you guys came out before Wu-Tang, but did you get compared to Wu-Tang because of the Kung Fu aspect? Nah, you know what it is? Which is funny, is is um everybody actually thought that there was going to be a comparison. Yeah. But if you think about it, you're, you're, <laughs> you're in this game where everybody came out in the gi, bro. Like at the end of the day, a lot of people, when they start to think about it, like Beastie Boys, when they first came out, they wore gis. You get me? Mm. Saigon. So, mm. Saigon. so anytime a person asks me a question, I'm like, yo, bro, I mean, this is something that went back way before me. I just embraced it totally different because of what, you know, martial arts did for me. I was born with respiratory problems. Oh, wow. So mm. put me in, in, in martial arts so I could find a different way of breathing, a different breathing pattern, you know what I'm saying? Because I wasn't mm. good at sports, so he was like, at least let me put him in martial <laughs> arts. But that's where the discipline came from. So, comparison... Mm. Nah, not really. I mean, people would be like, "Yo, was there Fushnikins first or the Wu Tang?" Yeah, Fushnikins came first, and then Wu Tang came mm-hmm. after. But big up to Wu Tang because of uh, where they took it. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They really yeah. took it there. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I big them up for for that always. You know what I'm saying? And becoming one of the one of the biggest rap groups in the world. That's dope to me. Right. You know, it's crazy too because um, the way, like, you know, coming up where I came up too. Uh, so I was watching those movies. That was an era of, of cats wearing, you know, mm-hmm. Mark karate shoes on the street. You right. see what I mean? And, and, it and had noon chucks in the back and wearing and having geese on in the street. This is what they was no, wearing. I, that, that, that. Yes, sir. Yes, so, sir. So I mean, I I grew up in that time where like, yo, and then the dudes who already always wore the whole shit like in the streets where I was from. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they was already a little uh, little cuckoo, little touch. Right. Plus they knew this shit. So you be all like, yo, first of all, this motherfuckers walking around like with these karate slippers on all everywhere we going, even at the mm-hmm. basketball court. Plus he got a gi on. So you already know, like, listen, you can't wear that shit in the hood. 
and not right. be about that. Not you be about that. Right, right. So it said, and, and then the voice you had, and, and that's a certain pitch, it seems like that almost was like how they used to do the intro to the karate movies. Right. Like I could I could have seen you jump out with a key on it, then you just spit it in the beginning of that movie, and now the shit's on. I mean, it, should, it, it is what it was. It really connected right. like that, you know? But, um, I, to, to this day, are you still in touch with those other guys, or, or what's the situation? No, I'm still in touch with them. Um, okay. I, I grew up with Pac Fu. He and I, we knew each other since we were 10 years old. So, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Hey, I'm the godfather of his kids. He's the godfather of my son, so. Mm -hmm. We moved away. I mean, now and then, you know, we would shoot a kite to him or shoot a line to him and we say, what's up? But, yeah, that's about it. You know, other than that, we good, though. So, so... The way the game is too now, mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of um, things that come back around. So there hasn't been anybody to reach reach out to y'all to perform or nothing. Or yeah, you know? there's been. Um, um, I'm doing this past the mic thing. Um, oh, was, when is it? July 21st, right. and people are reaching out. You know what I'm saying? But it's it, it just has to be right because I'm just not, especially for the hip. You know this this whole hip hop 50 thing. My thing is. I'm a go man. You can't just throw, you know, peanuts and carrots at a dude and expect no. people to stay no. different. You no. Know, I think respectfully, if you still have um, lyricists that are still here from certain groups, you know what I'm saying? You got to pay them according. That's just me. And it's, it's it, I, I just, I, I, I think that that should be across the board for everybody. I believe it. I you believe know, it. Across the board for everybody. So there's been a lot of shows that, you know, we've turned down like, that doesn't make any sense for us. You know what I'm saying? Nah, nah, nah. It don't make any sense. So my thing is this, this past the mic thing, you know, I did a verse for it, but I'm bringing out one of the group members so he could do his verse or whatever, just, you know, for him to get his feet wet. A lot of, you know, other promoters reached out. I'm just trying to make sure that their numbers make sense. If not, it's not. Cool. So, so have, since, since those heydays, have you guys performed at all? Uh, we did one or two shows, but again, it has Man. to make sense because, you know, it'll get to this point where it's just like, it got to this point where it was just like, all right, so they ain't have a record out in a while or whatever. So this is what I'm going to offer them. No, no, you can't do that. Yeah. That's definitely what we're not going to do. So everybody's like, yo, how come we not seeing them? It has to make sense. And if we bend and, and say, all right, we're going to take that purse for whatever show. Then all the promoters are gonna think that they could throw those peanuts at us, so um, we're not doing that. I, I, I believe. It. I mean, I've seen it firsthand, so you know, and I've you know toured or what have you. But then again, outside of Gangstar, when they broke up, I probably made like seven albums after that, so it was mm -hmm. kind of like a different part of thing going on. But I just know too that even certain things that I had heard I, automatically, I, I ain't doing that. Like you know what I'm oh, saying? Exactly. <laughs> like, it made no sense. It because because if they get you like that, they win anyway. Mm -hmm. That's number one. I and number two, huh? I think you would have to headline your own show because when you try to do those uh, big festivals, you're splitting the pot with fucking ninety bands. You know what I'm saying? So, well, well I figured well, he headlining as Big Sugar Foo Foo Schnickens is is the for, better bet for. I think for me, one thing one thing that I did understand um, mm -hmm. was one thing I, I did was I used to put out a lot of reggae records on the low. No one knew it was me, and I was touring with um, with uh, Sean Paul and all these people, and then people were just like, wait a second, that mm. dude look like, and I'm like, nah, that ain't me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that's that other side I was able to actually feed into, and the purses that the purse that they were giving me was pretty good for a reggae artist, you get me? Yeah. Because they so, get their money, so when they was telling me all right, so you want to do a, you know, like a Fushnikin reunion or do you know a couple of one-offs? I was like, bro, you gave me over this amount to do whatever by myself. So you you can't expect me to, to come on stage with my two group members, and you give me you try to give me half of what you gave me or less than that to split between yeah. three people. That's not going you know it's not going to work. Were you were you when you were uh, on the reggae tour? Were you chatting or, or were you straight chat? Straight yeah. chatting. So you already know how that is overseas. You know what I mean? Of course. Of course. I mean, I was saying on this show, uh, uh, one of our episodes a few back, so um, I didn't know it right off. 
Mm-hmm. But then because, you know, being in, in the light and the movement, so I was able to hear um, Heavy D chat where I was like, oh, shit, this dude's Jamaican, right? right and, you get me. And then um, same thing with Buster. It was like, all oh, this was behind backstage. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like when the world knew. But then I was like, when I knew, and I really used to be like, damn, these motherfuckers is nice with that. I wonder why they, they don't do them both. You know what I'm saying? What they mm-hmm. weren't at the time. It was just, you just... A whole record's rapping, you know what I mean? But mm-hmm. those dudes, could both, they both sounded good. They both, you know what I mean, had that on lock, you know what I'm saying? So, and for yourself. So obviously, if you could rap, and you could also chat, was a reason why, like, you didn't do whole chat records or whatever, you know what I mean? No, the first, remember the very first record that I did was a dance hall record, which was Ring the Alarm with the Fushnik. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, okay. And everybody was like, okay, so you did a dance hall record as your first single, how come the rest of the singles are strictly hip hop? And I was mm. like, well, you know, we trying to mix it up totally different because when it's time for touring, yeah. our touring was crazy because we would tour with Shaba, then come mm. back and tour with Lead of the New School and Tribe, then go out with Oswad and all these other bands. And we stayed on the road because of the uh, the reggae influence in our music. You get me? Right, right. The complexity of it, huh? Mm-hmm. Wow, and I wasn't even aware of that with, yeah, with you. I could see where it would it would be that way. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But I could, you know. Excuse me, excuse me one second. I'm sorry. Um, now nah, I'm just saying. Hit that anyway, like button. Subscribe to the Danger Zone go, Podcast. <laughs> go ahead. D.I., was you saying something? No, no. I was I, I was, I was listening. I just, uh, yeah, I, I hear you with the about the about the money and stuff like that so that that shit is a mm-hmm. that shit probably is a nightmare but you know fucking well, think well about, I, I just don't know what what I, I i don't know how to it's like on the fence thing with me like i, I really don't know but i do hear what you're saying about wanting to get what you let me let me hear you know. why it's a it's a on the fence thing for you let me i'm trying to understand well that. um yeah, I, I don't know like the, as years go on i don't think people should always expect the same thing they got this year next year you know what i'm saying like totally understand that right but especially if, if the group isn't putting out new music totally understand that right yeah but i'm gonna give you three situations i got a couple too man but go All ahead right, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you three situations, <laughs> you five right? situations coming up. and that's why we're called the three, danger got, zone i got three situations naughty by nature stop putting out mu- music right yeah yeah mm. stop putting out music their purse did not decline. Why? Um, I'm not. I'm not really. I mean, they do have uh fucking five hit records. Okay, uh, right. They yeah, have yeah. five hit records. So, because of their five hit records, um, they'll get booked for shows, and promoters would have to pay because of their five hit records. Yeah. Right. So as the years go on. It's never really any change because they know that Naughty by Nature will be able to bring out those same amount of people. It'd probably just be older. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or they come out. So I learned that from them, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's the same thing with Black Sheep. Black Sheep could do the same thing. They'll come out with the choices yours and everything else, and the the, the purse would stay the same, right? Fushnikins could come out and do uh true Fushnik, Lash Move, Ring the Alarm what's up doc or whatever it is and it's the same and it's the same thing so my thing is when you have rock bands that don't put out any albums yeah. ever rock, they, they put out they, they do their six albums that are well known and they tour over those albums their purses don't drop at all across the board they, it never does right so for me i was like you know something let me take a page out of this book i am not even gonna jump on any of these shows it doesn't make any sense because some of the things that the promoters was asking me some of the purses they was asking you know to, to give to us made no type of sense you can't have three group members and be like yo well <laughs> i'm first and foremost i'm gonna fly you all guys coach now it's all it's all good because we're getting there we're gonna get there on coach you're gonna put us way in the back in the back of the plane you know what i'm saying where we're getting hit with the peanut cart and the whole nine yards it's all good right <laughs> right. We're still, right we're still gonna get to the destination we get there now and you know once we get there there's a certain level 
when it comes to treating people, especially artists. Now, I'm not going to do that. Here's the purse or whatever. Wait a second. There's, you know, there's some money missing. A whole, a lot of that stuff happened, you know, through, throughout the years. So you have to get to a point where you set a precedence with people and be like, well, listen, if you don't have my money, I'm not showing up one. You know what I'm saying? If I'm no. flying, if I'm flying from New York to come to Japan or flying from New York to come to Paris and all this other stuff, you can't chuck me in the back of the plane, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm 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 six one. You know what I'm saying? I, I need some room. I need to do whatever. You can't chuck me back there. I'll be taking NyQuil because I can't even do it. So I don't even imagine you know what I'm how you so, do it. So those are some of the reasons why, you know, you have certain groups that you won't see, and that doesn't mean that they won't bend for the purse. You get me? Yeah, yeah. It's just the treatment of uh, certain acts in general. Like I've seen certain acts. Uh, and do certain venues that I was at at the same venue, and I'd have to I'd, I'd, I'd have to question them and be like, "Yo, all right, well, how much did he pay you?" And they tell me, and I'm like, "Don't ever do that again." <laughs> <laughs> your, right, you. this is your first time and your last time that you're gonna perform here, because you know you you, you accepted that purse. Yeah. Then when, then when I see them on other shows, I'm smiling like. You still took the same purse, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Because the I price cannot. gets around in, in that industry, in the promoter industry. Yo, I got, exactly. You know, I got this. You know. yeah. And every yeah. promoter in the hip hop industry knows each other. You get of yeah, course. Yeah. Yeah. I, had brand, I had brand new being over here for this amount. Now yeah. I had Lords of the Underground for this. Nah, bro. You're not doing that to us. <laughs> I I hate that shit when it comes to verses. I like it. You know, mm -hmm. so only pay, only shots showing And I've never said it to the artist. Right, because right. I know him, you know, and I'd be, I'd be like, oh, damn, he did this nah, so okay, that's what he told you, but this is what I'm right. saying. Right, so, yeah, exactly. And, and here's another thing about my, um, and uh, because, because you know, as the artist, you understand, you know what I'm saying, you understand what your impact was in that time and what it is and who, you know, legendary or iconic, whatever. So mm -hmm. I know my affiliation with an iconic group, you know what I'm saying, and sure. being being a foundation uh, against somebody and performing and be able, you know, get paid under that moniker, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So I understand. But at the same time, like you just said, when people, when I, if they even try to, like, I feel like certain things is trying to play. So when they even try to come in certain ways, mm -hmm. then I'm okay. But I understand that once upon a time, we were on these huge uh, tour buses, uh, getting ridic doing ridiculous treatment, whatever, and getting, Huh? That so now for me, the treatment has been still the same. Maybe the not the a lot of huge buses and all right. that stuff. Right. But the treatment, good, you know what I'm saying. And so exactly. I look at what now. What now? What I wanted to say with my two cents on that. What you were saying to DL. Um, so it's almost like a T-shirt uh, that's merchandise for me. So it's a big shirt T-shirt, right? So if I go in the store and buy this T-shirt. Right, it's it's um, it's maybe eleven dollars, ten eleven dollars. Go to Walmart, maybe it's five ninety nine with the shorts connected. So so <laughs> now I got t-shirt, right? You know what I'm saying? So now this t-shirt though I'm selling, this t-shirt for thirty dollars, sometimes forty, because it says Big Show, Gangstar Foundation on it. Yeah. So what it becomes is not the t-shirt; it's a classic now. You're basically buying that because you want a member, you want memorabilia. Yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, therefore, you treat that's that becomes a, a possession, not just I'm wearing a t shirt. So, I'm saying that as an, an analogy to the group thing being like, listen, I'm, I'm iconic to you, I'm legend to you. Like, you know what I'm saying? When I rock myself, I hear um, this kids out there, man, rocking these songs that I did like with, with cats like almost 30 years ago. And these, these people in the crowd, it's packed. They know the words with like verbatim. You know what I mean? And and tell us shit like you know, my uh, oh my aunt was here and my uncles were here like twenty some years ago. Or they were at a concert, so they told them to come. So what am I now? So I'm I'm a classic piece. I'm classic material. To you. you know what I mean? So you're gonna say your separate the joints are packed, whether they're big or small, they're packed. So mm -hmm. you're gonna sell that out. So therefore, you should be able to give me that. It shouldn't even be a question. It's when I say it, it's said. Like I just recently had a, a couple of promoters with some things that we're doing, and you just said the number to them, and they was like, boom. You know what I mean? So, I, mm -hmm. and it's like crazy because why are they doing that? That's because of who you are with the situation. You know what I mean? And they're treating that like that's some classic shit. So, you know what I mean? I, so I, mean, is, I understand. Is is your price tag to do an SOB show? 
and hip hop camp. The same, this, this, I mean, uh, two complete different spectrums. Is so, it? The, yeah. That was a that was that was a that was a good one. That was a good one, dude. That yeah. Was a good one. But we that, already know we already know what the SOBs joint what what it is. You get me? Right. Yeah. So you right. gotta be prepared mentally for the SOBs. Like, all right, I get it. It's some SOB shit or it's some hip hop camp. <laughs> but when you go when you go in, when you go in to do some some stuff overseas and they're like, yo, we need for you to do this festival. We already know what these festivals are drawing are drawing in. You know what I'm saying? So right. it's only right. It's only right to be like, yo, this is my price. Yeah, yeah. No question. I, well, well, no, I, I could deal with that. You know what I mean? But I'm just saying, overall, if a promoter comes to you and says, um, all right, we want to do a few one-offs and, you know, whatever, and and this is the price I'm going to pay. I'm like, yo, bro, you can't pay me that price. That just doesn't make any sense because, you know, it, it, it won't make any sense in the end. It, it just won't. And if I'm taking time away from my family to get on a plane to fly over there, yeah, I, we're, it doesn't make any sense. I'm missing out on some stuff at home. You get me? So I would, I, rather it, I would rather it makes sense to me to be like, okay, well, I could miss four days and go and do what I got to do. And whatever it is that I bring back adds to what's going on in my household. If it's not going to add, I'm not going to go. You know, it's crazy you say that, too, because I remember even, you know, back today, a few years back, uh, going to Japan and Australia. Like, mm-hmm. That I didn't want to really even be doing, but the, the, what you were getting paid and what was happening, that, like you, you know, Japan always played more than anybody in the entire world. So you yeah, know, they sure that their papers, they, their papers straight, no question. So right. and this, and people were smoking on cigarettes on the plane and all that shit. So it was like <laughs> it was crazy. But I okay, knew I'll get it. that I I was gonna be on this plane for fourteen hours, mm-hmm. but I knew that. Per money when you were getting a show was crazy already. You know what I mean? Uh we were young and wild, so we wasn't really running around with merchandise. We was just knowing what we were getting paid was ridiculous. And the way oh. where you see that and how they treated you. So that yeah. was meant to say, you know, okay, man, let's go ahead and do this for two weeks, three weeks, mm-hmm. and come and come back. And we come home back then at that time, probably was saying you guys touring. Um, but I come back, I'm only home probably for like eight days or nine days at that time. Not again. Then you out like that was normal, like all, all year long, a couple of years. Yeah. You, know what I mean? yeah. you would see the same groups you, in different areas. Like yeah. I run into Buster, I run into this one, I run into that. Oh shit, you know, we over here, we in Croatia. We, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So it's like, that's how it was. Like, so when, like you said, when you bring shit back to the crib, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's gotta be uh, that, and it was that. So it's, yeah, it's exactly. It makes exactly. sense to me. You know, I, I well, gotta be so. so. I used to bump into, I used to bump into Slane all all over the place like like in LA I'd see Slane and then Miami I'd see Slane just it was just weird just this happened to be him I would see him all over but, the place. But you know Europe <clears throat> excuse me Europe is different be, uh, different beast because you see your mans and stuff and friends and people and other artists and you're like okay so we're over here in Istanbul you mm-hmm. know what I mean or we're over here in Switzerland or we you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. so so many dudes I broke bread with and as groups and you know from from Ice T to Eddie Murphy to whoever, mm-hmm. right? You ran into them because you, you was like moving around the world. Exactly. You know what I mean? So I say the world is you know, and, and with you guys, because at the time you had like dreads, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you had dreads then, right? Yeah, them the dreads take their own life. You know what I'm saying? As years go on, right? But I, I, it's, but I'm always saying it because Jay Rue, I'd be like, yo. <laughs> hey, when them shit start, the parts start getting mad big, I was like, yo, go. Yeah, the die, king, die. Hey, <laughs> hey, it's time to, it's t- time to vacate and get hats that fit right and you're good. You know, exactly. but it, 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 is, it is what it is. But recently, so like I said, man, I listened to that then. I, I was checking some shit out. Then I seen you. And that's what even brought you to my mind more because I was like, yo, Chip Fool was like, he was like, like, the shit was like it was yesterday, like what you were mm-hmm. spitting, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And how you started it all, you know what I'm saying? And then I was like, okay, you know, it, it's, it shit is like the same, like, it's like, sure. So, and and it, was, it was only like six years removed, five years removed from people rapping one syllable bars. You right. know, you got, you got to remember mm-hmm. that too. It wasn't that far removed from, from that. I so think, right now, do you mm-hmm. find yourself like, do you freestyle rap a lot, you know, on your own and, you know, studio shit or whatever? Or you're just, you know, ready to go when it's time to go? 
Uh, ready to go when it's time to go. Album is already finished, just clearing samples right now. Mm. Remember, I just couldn't do nothing because of that that contract with 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 um Zamba Publishing. You know what I mean? So yeah, now, you're sure. now everything is prepared. Um, I'm happy that you know uh, DJ Enough and Hot 97 embraced a few records. WBLS embraced a few records, so I'm ready to go. That's why I'm 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 acting a fool on my page right now. You get? Me? Nah, <laughs> dude, listen. Let me I'm tell you something. Cool right now. It's I'm got to wake. You know. It's got to wake motherfuckers up because I'm trying <laughs> to tell you. I heard you. I should. I mean, first of all, I felt like dudes and then like yourself <clears throat> who rhyme like you did mm -hmm. at the time. So that shit was already before its time. Oh, yeah. So mm -hmm. therefore, as we seen with Jay Z and shit like that, mm -hmm. all you did was kind of like a stick shit, sold mm -hmm. it up at times, revved it back up, right? Yeah, Whatever. No. It, and fast forward 20 years later, 30 years later, you can mm -hmm. still do it. At, uh, uh, even the rapping cat, um, Twister. Yeah. I'm just saying, that's, that ability never changed. So as long as you can still keep, uh, uh, like, do new lyrics if you want, or write new shit, whatever. Man, mm -hmm. that, I mean, like I said, I heard you. That shit was like yesterday to me. I, the you weed, know what I mean? Like I the, weed, laughing. the weed festivals yeah, would be perfect for you guys, man. The, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like the, the cups we do, all those, those things would be perfect for you guys. And now those, I, I those bring the bread too. So yeah, I've been asked to do a couple of um those 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 hemp shows, those weed festivals because of some of the reggae records that yeah, I put out. Over exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you get me? So everybody's like, well, now that we know that's you, and those five reggae records that I had in my, you know, what I'm saying in my possession, I never knew that was you. But dude, you need to come over to this overseas to some of these festivals. Now I'm starting to put stuff together a certain way so it all makes sense. You get me? Now that I could say that those records are me. Yeah, yeah. And I put mm -hmm. the records up on Instagram and a lot of people was like, yo, I heard that record. I didn't even know that was, you know, I did, didn't even know it was me. That's, that's and I'm saying I had to go, I had to use a different moniker when I was touring Jungle Rock Jr. I was like, yeah, that's my name, J-R-J-R. <laughs> and... Yeah. I was making that money, you know, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And everybody, they didn't put two and two together because the dreads was gone and everything I had yeah. behind me. I was destroying it, you get me? Until yeah. I did a show, it was me, Shaggy, MF Doom, which was crazy, That's and um, Sean Paul. So I was sitting in my dressing room and he peeked his head in and was like, yo, bro, let, let, let's stop fronting. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about, dude? He was like, yo, you chip fool, right? And I was like, yeah. And he was just like, yo, bro, wait till when I get back home and tell everybody this. He's like, yo, you're so under the radar doing what you're doing, but these records that you make, I, I know these records, you get me? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I rather it stayed that way until now that, you know what I'm saying? The contract is, everything is is over with. So I'm, I'm really going to act a fool in a minute. They're going to get everything. You already so when you... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Well, um, go ahead. You already had success in, in your career with music. What are you looking forward to this time around now that you're not under contract? Uh, this time, I mean, you basically, I'm just having fun right now, to be honest with you. Word. Having fun. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm doing things, you know, at my own pace and everything else, and I have anybody to rush me. And not only that, you know, with what I'm doing, you know, it could also help the businesses that I have. You get me? So mm. with that and having kids in mind, it's it's more so for them, not me. I'm mm. just having fun doing it this time. Right. What are your other businesses? <laughs> what, can, uh, what can we what can we support you in? Uh the school initiative that I have in about ten different schools. We're about to um we're about to expand. We're actually well, to be honest with you, the school initiative started overseas in Belgium because I didn't want to bring it to New York yet because it was about music. And I know Jive and Zamba would have probably found some way to have been like, well, all those things that you're writing, you know, we own a piece. So for it to come to New York and be in the school systems for 10 years and me, you know, being able to write curriculums for different schools has been a blessing for me. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? This time around with the company, I'd like, you know, I'd like to, um, we're already working with colleges, but I'd like to actually have a school the, the end result would be my own school you know where people could just come and just and just learn what they need to learn you get me that's the that's the end all be all would be a school that's dope man it's that's that's, that's respected man and like you know uh 
a lot of people, you know, are trying to do school things, whatever. But that's always a, to me, it's, it's it's growth and it's motion right. for at us. So, you know, to me, that's dope. It's, you know, uh, on the other hand, though, um, when you on tour like that, would you ever, you know, spit? Would you ever uh, spinning like straight rap records, or you just did the whole chat? Only you reggae was- records. Only reggae. Okay. Records. Didn't do no chat. Nothing. There'd be some promoters who duck in and be like. Aren't you, dude? Yo, we pay you X amount of dollars that when you get off the stage to run to this club and do some hip hop shit and then run back and finish, you know what I'm saying? But (laughs) I kept it strictly on the whole reggae scene. So, you know, I already know that there's fans out there that's waiting for those type of records. So it's 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 a beautiful thing now to create and say that I know I could put this record on this album because I know who's waiting for it. I was able to test the waters for all these years and and actually and actually sell records. You get me? And actually sell Man, that shit's dope. So, um, DL, did you was something you want to say? There? Um, no, I just wanted to know. Um, <clears throat> me personally, I'm a producer, so I just kind of wanted to know what, who some of your favorite producers were that you never that you that you worked with. DL, that oh, I oh, work oh, with, or that I never worked with? Uh, that you worked with, yeah. Sorry, I'm gonna I'm give you both. Oh, nice, perfect. Because yeah. I was gonna ask ask after, so perfect. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> my favorite producer, my favorite producer is Ali Shaheed. Okay. Um, Amazed. Yeah, he he would he would just allow me to be me. You know what I'm saying? He let he'd allow me to go in the booth and make all the mistakes in the world, and then he'd wait for me to finish, and then tell me what was wrong. Mm. You know what I'm saying, you know, you had some producers that was in it for the money, whereas whatever it is that he did in there, just let him do it, and we gonna put it out. But well, Ali would be like, yo. You know, leave the session and come back. You know, what I'm saying a little a few hours later, okay. and he'd have those conversations like, "Yo, no, this is not gonna work." I respect that. Um, Premier is a person that I always wanted to work with. Never got the chance to work with him, and even and he came up to Jive. I remember he did. He came up to Jive and was like, "Yo, I want to work with them." And you yeah. know, Sophia Chang was the person who signed us at the time. I don't know why we didn't work with Premier. Um, one of my other favorite producers is Diamond D. Mm-hmm. Uh, nice, nice. Diamond D, Ali Shahid, um, Alchemist. I would love to work with the Alchemist. Um, okay. Yeah, all my men too. Right? Hey. Knots. I would love to work with Knots. Mm. I would love to work with Knots. Um, Rock Wilder. Mm-hmm. Um, Rock Wilder. And yeah, I think that's it. I mean, you know, Doc, you, you got your. Your, your huge producers, your, your Dre's and everybody right. else. Right. But those those in the, the those in the pocket producers are, are the type of producers I like. You know what I'm saying? Did you ever work sure. with uh, or meet Clive Davis over there when you were signed over there? Yeah. Oh, I nice. met Clive. Oh, okay. Is that a good experience, bad experience? No, it was a pretty good experience. Oh, nice. Yeah. Was, I met Clive through, through our channels, we met him too. Like, so that's what I'm like, it's, I laugh when he said, you know, hey, it is what it is to us. It was just like, you know, yeah. you meet somebody, you, we got to keep it moving and try to do what we're doing. So <laughs> I feel you 100% it's on like that. He could have been Jim so, Smith. It's all good. But yeah, you know what? Good. One thing, you know, we, we respect your pop, we, we respect your prowess and all the hip hop that you do. Mm-hmm. But right now, we would like to know the 10 favorite MCs of Chip Fool. My 10 favorite MCs. Ten. Mm-hmm. Let's go. Um, Brother J from X Clan. Okay. He needs to get more. He needs to get more <laughs> recognition. You know, he was nice, though. That's the, you know. Yeah. He, he, the, the way how he used to move on tracks, no one moved like him. But Brother J needs to get that Master Ace. Mm-hmm. Master Ace. Um, He's the first, too. Brother J, Master Ace. Yeah. I'm going to say, all right, let's get into that. Andre 3000. Nice. Okay. We can get into, the, we can get into Biggie. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to get into Royce the 5'9". Yes, that's a good um, one. Royce the 5'9", yes. Um, we're going to say Buster. Nice. Mm-hmm. We're going to say KRS-One. Right. We're going to say... We're gonna say Slick Rick, right? Um, two more things. <laughs> um, um, Good. I'm gonna say Grand Pooba. Okay, rest in my brother. Yeah, rest in peace. Grand Pooba. Nah, no, Grand I'm sorry, I'm bugging. I'm bugging. I'm, <laughs> nah, nah, nah. 
Grand- I'm thinking of other shit. I'm sorry. He's thinking of Granddaddy Ayu. Right, yeah, right. I'm going to say Grand Poobah. Did I say Eminem? No, not yet. No. No, that I'm was gonna, it. I'm, I'm going to say Eminem. Nice. That's your 10. That's no. my 10 right there. That's my 10. That's fine. And we appreciate uh, that. My, um, yeah. my, my honorable mentions would be <laughs> Q-Tip, mm. um, Guru. The reason why I say Guru, not because, you know, you're interviewing me. Um, no, no. Uh, what was the, um, the first record I rhymed to at a show was Take Heed to the Words of the Manifest. I manifest. I knew it was going to be manifest too. Yeah, that was, that was a record that, I, you know, that instrumental was crazy to me. So I, that was one of the, the first records that was on our demo was that record you know what i'm saying um tragedy oh. and i'm gonna say nas oh wait a second wait 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 rock him nice. mm. him should have been in my 10. it's cool all right rock him should have been in my 10 because you, you know yeah he, he said what he's you know when he when rock him was doing what he doing he pushed my pen different you know he changed the whole entire thing yeah, that's what I said about it's, you know Kane and everybody else, but you know those those particular MCs is what. It's I, great you know. to me. It's dope that you said he pushed your pen because mm-hmm. of the timing. I I was still inside when um when he came out mm-hmm. Pacific album, the one that had, I ain't no joke on it, and so we were and we was in the um the, the release house. You know what I'm saying? Get ready to go home. You know after a few years. And that song, that album was the one we were rocking like. And it was just more, like at that time, I knew I was, you know, I was there already rapping this shit beforehand, but I knew I was going to get back in once I got right, you know. But that was something that was like a guide, you know what I'm saying? Where I was like, damn, this one for the shit. This shit is fly. And I was getting out. Yeah. Every time I hear that song, I remember, you know, getting mm-hmm. dressed, about to go on the other side of the gate. Work mm-hmm. my job outside for the day and come back because we always started the day off with ain't no joke. I ain't right. no joke. That means then we went for the rest of that album. Man, that shit. Man, I can't be you right. But uh, anyway, man, listen, shit, we don't keep motherfuckers forever, but we we, we wanted to catch up with you so bad. So yeah. appreciate you coming. I know last week somebody said they said yeah. you were BQE, but I, I, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going fuck with you, but you know we knew you got you got crossed up. You know what I'm saying? I, said, yeah, I got hey, cro- I really got crossed up trying to I get. Said, back. Hey, my man, Chip Fool Man on the BQE running. Nah, so we we knew, you know. But um, and anybody who don't know what the BQE is <laughs> in New York, you do know. And if you from around where every, everywhere yeah. else, then it's a barbecue. But it, <laughs> anyway, it is what it is. And I'm and I'm glad that we connected too, because you know that's now now see that that's my gap too, brother right there. See what I'm saying? Exactly. So we holding it down with the connection. Exactly. You, know, you know what it is right now. See, exactly. but uh, hey Tanya, I know you got some good things to say. What's happening? Yeah, let us know what are your socials so we can keep up with not only your music but your nonprofit organization. Um, Chip Fu on on Instagram, also Math Workshop on Instagram math workshop on um facebook um black ink entertainment on instagram also and black entertainment black ink entertainment on facebook so those are the um things that i'm i'm repping right now so anybody that's interested in whatever i'm here let's let's work it's time good man thank you well chef fool you know that's we appreciate right. you stopping by man and, and, and chopping awesome. up with the pleasure and um, you know, what I'm saying, hope to connect in the future and see to see you man along the road somewhere. And um, yes, sir, get you coming. You know what I'm saying? Problem, King. Thanks for having me. Thank Hold you up. so much. Man. Thank you. Thank you. All right, y'all have a good one. Yeah, yeah. you too. Bro. Shout out to Chip Fu. That was cool. I don't know. I was kind of um the, about the about the wanting wanting this or that to tour. We don't know what we don't know what they were being offered. So that's why I wasn't trying to go to, to to this or to that. But you know, we don't know what the this, offer was. Could have been seven hundred. Yo, we'll matter. give you seven hundred a night. Like for all we know, you know. What I'm saying? I think at the, it doesn't matter in the sense of like sometimes you as an entrepreneur, what have you, you set your own price because that's what you're worth. Whether the the market is gonna pay that price or not, if that's what you feel in like. No, I'm all about that. You know, I, I was just saying, as far as the promoter, 
That, I, I was. That's why I said I'm on the fence with it because I'm like I hear you as the no. artist and I hear you as the promoter. Like I, I feel you know I see both sides. What's of the it. thing? The thing because what he said was, was very valid was <clears throat> excuse me about with those groups going out and um, shout out the new edition that's on tour right that's now. Right. I was them dudes that. money that they crazy. They're selling out these places though, coliseums, whatever. Yeah, their yeah. money's crazy. Another group was old as hell, um, Chicago. Shout out to them. I'm in the movie with them. Uh, yeah, you got to see with them. Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, actually, it's a couple of scenes. Them and it that is a couple of scenes. They come back or, or something. I, 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 we see that movie, right? Yeah, 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 we did. I've seen it a couple of times. That, but, uh, that other actor, um, Liam, whatever his name is. The, the Liv, other Liv dude, Schreiber? Was, yeah, it could have been. Liv Schreiber, he, so, plays, he plays Ray Donovan on Showtime? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. him. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He a little snack. So, um, <laughs> oh, y'all just watched that? No, no, I've, I've, we watched, uh, we've seen Ray Donovan. I've seen Clear History a couple of times. No, no, no. Oh, I said, I thought you oh, recently, I know you've seen it, but I thought you recently saw it again or something. Um, no. I don't know, like a year, year ago, maybe. Maybe around around the time you talked about it on the podcast, I think. That I watched movie's, it, I, that movie's I watched still it without, without knowing you were in it. Yo. I was like, oh, shit. A lot of people, <laughs> a, lot of, hey, a lot of people did, because the funny thing is, though, it's, I never really was followed on um, Larry David and none of that. So when I watched the movie, yeah. a, a lot of parts that I was seeing, uh, a lot of parts I was seeing, they were coming together because I was seeing the movie. Yeah, yeah. But when I was on set, I'm like, yo, what's them stupid little cars all around the place? The and then those two women. Yeah, the Howard. <laughs> and then I thought they were cars. I thought they were cars to get you around the yeah, fucking yeah. The Golf movie. Carts, yeah. and, and then um, the two women, the comedians, and they were broke on the side of the road and they were talking shit. So in that movie, like, so I was sitting in them with them in the room. So we were just having a funny ass mad, mad laughs, like in the room, chilling. So then when I seen the movie, I said, okay, that's their part. Cause you didn't know what everybody was fucking doing until right. the you, movie came. You film it in parts, basically the ones that are I, I right. know, involving I'm, you. I'm sure since this movie's come out, a hundred people have told you this, but you would fucking love Curb Your Enthusiasm, man. Like well, it's, well, it's one of the funniest things that's ever been on you've television. You've told him that before yeah, yeah. on the show. Like if you don't like well, Seinfeld, I get it. Like Seinfeld, you know, like picture like Seinfeld but rated R. You know what I'm saying? You know what the best thing was for me about that is the fact that um is that he did he does improv. Yeah. So you know me as much as you do now and stuff like that. So when the dude told me, excuse me, when uh the woman came and said, Listen, I'll go in there and try to be funny. Just, you know, whatever yeah. I'm looking at her like nah. that. I knew then. I said, "There's five of us right there." I said, "When I go in there, I know I got this." There, there's being funny, and then there's trying to be funny, and trying to be That's funny, and not being funny comes off mad, corny, and uncomfortable. But if you're a natural, so, funny person, it, it's it, the comedy. The oh. comedy is gonna nail. It. It's gonna hit. Every Let time, me tell you. Know what it's classic. It's classic to this day. I might have said it before, but I said it again. I went in first. He said whatever line he was gonna say. I said. Um, Line that I said back to him had something to do with a robe and Jesus Christ sandals, uh -oh. right? <laughs> yo, your boy turned red as hell, and he was like, "Yo, guys, it." I'm telling you, that's really how that happened. That's awesome. And everybody that was was behind me, they, they, he, told, he told, he told it, he told the agent, like, "Yo, just basically, look, everybody else out there can go home." I, I was number one, but once he said that, and I hit him with that, that line, the, the back to it. Yeah. The dude you can see was holding in that like one of the first, you know what I'm saying? That's funny. You know, so it, 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 it's you would, crazy. You would love it, that show. I, I there's you would I'm gonna see, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna send you I'm gonna well, watch you it. I'm gonna watch the series again and I'm gonna send you the perfect episode. <laughs> Yo, you know what's crazy? Yeah. So out of all the royalty checks and stuff for movies, the HBO shits be the smallest ones. But anyway, right? Yeah, so. my I have a I have a HBO check um every year. It's like what it's like thirty eight dollars or some shit. <laughs> Them shits is cornucopia. Them is so they, I, did they corn I did part of that documentary. Uh, what was it called? Boston. Corn maids. I did a marath uh, marathon. Uh, marathon. It's called marathon. It's on HBO. I, I I worked on that documentary and yeah, like the HBO checks are small. I I got paid. I got paid for it. Like I got paid good to do it, but the royalty checks are wildly yep. like, not even worth the time. You know, like, <laughs> all of them. Are. Even even the Jenny Jones ones I've been getting. All them. Them shits is all stupid. Really? Jenny, like, yeah, Jones one? Jenny. Must be in syndication yeah, but, somewhere. Yeah, yeah you know, I, was, money. I could see all the lists of, of what's on them, you know, yeah. different shit. 
That's yeah, how I'd be knowing, you know. But those are better because they're incorporated with other like programs. And shit you must like get that, you so. must get good ones from the Heat though because that one's on syndication on like TBS. So the, the, the movies ones are all good. Yeah, all yeah. the movie ones. Yeah, the Heat. You know all all the movies. On. Those movie ones. So you know it's crazy too because hey, that's some shit that we, we could do. The time we could do, we could um get ready to keep this podcast going, and then next time uh, about two months before the. Uh, uh, two months before the uh, marathon next year, so we get DL in training to run the marathon. No. <laughs> he went. Wasn't Yo. Thought. You know Yo, you, you don't have to run the marathon, right? You know, you can literally walk it if you want to. Give me suspenders. Oh, that's what I, and I can run. That's what I was about to say. That's what I was about <laughs> he to can say. Walk it. Literally, if he to. literally, we gas this, and he can even walk it. He can walk and run, even puff. To see if we can get through this whole 26 miles. That'll be a I good I could do the 26 life. miles if it was walking and running. Running straight through. I don't think I've ever nah. I don't think I've ever had it like that in I my life, know. even in my yo dunk dunk this a nerf ball yo, days. <laughs> yo, this, this shit the build up to that the build up to that could be the shit though. Like we got we got DL like bad footage, right? Get right. Get ready to take plus I try off. to run all the time with Bailey Boom. when I'm walking him, and, and like my, my pants will start falling, and I'll blame it on Bailey. I'm like, Bailey, slow down. What are you doing? Yo, it was, uh, uh, maybe uh, my owner should get pants to fit. Hey. <laughs> we'll you'll, start there. You'll follow, we'll, we'll follow him the whole thing. The uh, hot break hill, all that shit. Right? <laughs> yeah, you can stop and get a smoke break. That shit will be crazy, yo. I used to play, uh, I used to play rec basketball at, at, uh, um, with my cousin, and he used to smoke during the game. Uh, <laughs> it was crazy. That's talent. Only time I only, only time we smoked anything during the game that, that was lockdowns. That's what was like, yo, dude, you wasn't supposed to just puff and then let's go play ball. That's fine. But, I would like smoke before yeah. I worked out. Shout out to Chip Fu. That was crazy. I've been shot. I've been talking to Chip Fu um, online for years. I don't. I don't think I've ever met him. I. I, I don't think so. So shout out to Chip. Well, Fu. you know, thanks for coming on the podcast. Thank you very much. Like I was saying. uh to him, and as we all know, I would see these guys because everybody was traveling. So, or I don't think I ever met him. the common denominator for a lot of them times was <clears throat> shows in New York. So, if you didn't see somebody somewhere, you was going to see him at a show in New yeah, York. Yeah, because most of the rappers are from New York. Yeah, they're like, oh, what's you know going what on tonight? Oh, fucking gang stars down at the SOBs. Oh, let's go, fuck it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, we go to and them hanging out. We get tunnel. tunnel. And I told you that one night in tunnel. It's it's that was Manhattan, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. But it was this one night, Sticky Fingers, um, Queen Latifah, Tupac, uh, Mike Tyson, um, uh, I think Denzel. Like this is all way the fuck back then. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like it, it was nothing. Everybody, you're amongst like rappers party with each other. It wasn't someone trying to shoot this one or beef with this crew or whatever. It was like dudes was hanging. You know, but then the, the little beast will come up eventually, like uh, Uncle Lou and um and Dre and, and and all that shit, and then East Coast West Coast, and then she got Cuckoo. But in the beginning, when I was first going in the early nineties, like that, like ninety one, now I'm at ninety two, ninety three. Nah, that shit was, you know, motherfuckers was love up in them spots. Yeah. But as we stand here today, shout to Sticky Fingers. Wanna... Shout to Sticky. Yeah, she had, man, are they on tour. Oh, this is on their what thirtieth yeah. reunion tour? Thirty years of back to fuck up. I got grounded. That I, I, I always joke with Sticky Fingers. Sticky Fingers is, uh, I would say, Sticky Fingers is probably my oldest friend. Like, I, like it goes beyond music in 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 the, in the industry. I, like it goes beyond music with that guy. But I will say that we always joke about. Remember when we went to his his house in L.A. I always joke about it. He got me grounded. When that album came out, I, I was the last time I, I remember ever being grounded was when, <laughs> was when that album right. came out. <laughs> uh, hashtag so, petty. <clears throat> just to get into that real, just to tell you why, Big Shook, I'm, I'm 12. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was 12 years old when that album came out. And I was like, I, I want to get this album. You know, this album. And, my, you know, my mom was probably sick of listening to fucking Cypress Hill. So she was like, okay, I'll buy it for you. And she went and she bought me this album. Um. I believe she bought it. For, I might have paid for it. I don't know. She took me to get it. Let's just say that. And I got the album. It's in the bag. And I should have left. Sam Goody. I should have just left. But I was like, no, I'm going to check the posters. Who got who are the posters that are out? And while I was checking the posters, she picked up 
the back the fuck up display case CD and she's looking at it. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? She's looking at the cover, figuring out what it says. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Back, you know, back the fuck up. And she turned that cover over and the titles of those songs. You remember, Shug? <laughs> She was yeah. like, um, the titles, my the titles were wild, bro. My mom read the, the hilar- titles before I got to. <laughs> they, the Larry, the Larry shit about is that you're explaining that story to me, and then um, that little thumb shit goes up. Yeah. The little, <laughs> the little emoji shit, yeah. shit like right here. I'm like, you're telling the story to my mom. So. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. So you know what I'm she's she's upset because I listened. I had a salt and pepper tape. And that salt and pepper said shit on a record. Oh, how how would someone ever swear on a record? So she made me put that tape in on the ride home. Oh no! You know, and the very first song, mm. it moved back, motherfuckers, <laughs> driving down the street with my mom, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, "This is what you're listening to." <laughs> she must have thought you were hey. possessed by the devil. Hey. <laughs> this is what you're listening to. Get in the back seat. Yeah. No, but, His yeah. wonderful church going mom. Uh, but uh, luckily, luckily, LP. luckily, the mall was was close enough to my house that we didn't get to Black Vagina Finder. Oh my god! <laughs> but, but, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that might you might be explaining to us right now how you graduated from private school. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> I was gonna say he would have went to a special yeah. school. But yeah, <laughs> the, I, I always joke with Sticky about that. But but anyway, you were saying yeah. yeah. Well, listen. Um. So, uh. As we know, uh, there was a fight recently um, with uh, Tank Javante oh my God. Uh, against Brian Garcia. Garcia. Um, excuse me, I'm sorry. No, so Tank <laughs> Javante Davis against Ryan Garcia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they call him Tank. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And um, basically, he beat his ass. So um, <laughs> he, I think he Spoiler knocked him out in seven rounds, but he, he knows. He caught him flush a few times, but then that seventh round, he caught him in the ribs. Yeah. He caught him in the ribs, and they danced for a couple of seconds, and your man took a knee. Yeah, yeah. So you know you could, he, he Yeah, he, he was he was hurting bad. He got Yo, hit. Yo, he brought, he, yeah. he started back up a little bit and took a knee quick. Yeah. Right? And, he was like, and they counted him out. They counted him out on his knee. So that means that dude hit him with that box. And, and now, mind you, round after round, these shits, you get hit with bricks. That shit builds up. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, shout out to Tank. But the reason why I'm speaking on it is because um, he was inspired. Jay-Z helped uh, inspire the boxer, Javante Davis, to victory with a motivational speech. Um, Jay-Z has given some pretty inspiring speeches in his day, but arguably none has been quite as inspiring as the speech he gave ahead of the Javante Davis fight against Ryan Garcia. Uh, Davis had been the hot topic of headlines since Saturday, April 22nd, when he knocked out Garcia in the seventh round. You have to say, when he knocked out Garcia in the seventh round. During the eagerly anticipated bout at the T-Mobile, T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, the three-division champion, also known as Tank, uh, it's funny because these are little dudes, but they're in his, in his um, weight class, he's Tank. He sent Garcia to the canvas in the second round before finishing him off in the seventh with a powerful and perfectly timed uppercut to the ribs. So he dropped that boy to his knees, right? Now, Hip Hop 2 was well represented at the fight. When Davis walked out to the ring, Chief Keith was in tow with the rest of his entourage, performing his smash hit, Love Sosa, to the delight of the crowd. Um, but it was Ho's motivational speech that played before Davis' walkout that brought the crowd to its feet, which he delivered over interspersed clips from various parts of the boxer's career. He said, I had a dream if all men could fight. No, that's not what he said. But every, <laughs> <laughs> everything in life <laughs> is for your greatest good. Uh, everything in life is for your greatest good, Jay-Z began. No matter how difficult it seemed at the time, everything is for your greatest good just teaching you discipline so you can receive your blessing. He continued, see, I'm from the bottom, from the mud. It doesn't matter if you're from Brooklyn or from Baltimore. All that matters is that you believe in yourself when no one else will. Anytime you want something in life, you got to set your intention. When you see your intentions, you believe that shit in your soul. 100% it's going to happen for you. And I promise. 
And this is this is what he said in his little speech. And then after that, he said, now, if you go out there in the name of little people and beat the shit out of Ryan Garcia, we will all be great. <laughs> speaking of. Get, speaking get out of, there and do it. Hey, listen, that's Martin Luther Jay-Z. But anyway, right. Um, Martin Luther Jay-Z. Remember when, remember when Mayor Manuno was trying on Martin Luther King Day was... He called him Martha Luther King Jr. Martha. Yo, hey, you know that guy? That's the beat of Menino, but then you know they call him Mumble. haven't heard that, you should definitely yeah, look yeah, that yeah. up. They, call, Speaking they of, called him Mumble because he, had, he, had, he used to talk like he had marbles in his mouth. Speaking but of people getting knocked out, jump, I got two segues. Well, hold up. Oh. Before we jump off of that, I still want to give a shout out to Javante for winning that fight. And much success to you and keep going on, but we need to see it. Go ahead, man. All right, speaking of people getting knocked out, do you know who Nate Diaz is? UFC fighter. Yes. So yes. Uh, Nate Diaz was uh, filmed on, on, there was a melee on the street outside some club and some guy was fucking with Nate Diaz and he, he put him in a headlock and knocked him out conscious in, in, in oh. two seconds. He put him in one of them moves and he just bam, knocked, knocked the guy out. The guy just fucking hit the ground like it, like it was nothing. And, and it just goes to show you what, what happens when, when drunk people think they can fight professional fighters. <laughs> Might not be a good hey, idea. Just saying. just saying. It also it also goes to show you when drunk people actually try to fight people that aren't as drunk, it can yeah, fight. It's so crazy. <laughs> the, um, um and I then mean, Go ahead. I've had people call me stuff and say, you know, the N-word or whatever. Drunk as hell can't stand up. And then I'll be <laughs> like, I would try to give them, you know. I say, listen, man, just go ahead. You know what I'm saying? You know, being being mature about it. I, except for one dude, I really had the Tom and Jerry slap the shit out of him. But that's because it's it's when they go to the drunk bar and they're rocking. Uh, <laughs> oh, I love that one when they go like this. This is the best one. Yeah, I, <laughs> the best I warned one you circle. already. Uh, and I'm not going to the drunk people, but at this particular time, it was, yo, oh, fuck you. You ain't going to. The, the New York City... <laughs> The New York City Police Department and the New York City Fire Department had a charity hockey game this weekend. Did you see anything about this on the it internet? Sounds like a good idea. When no. You start <laughs> so there were. So uh, hey, I was too busy watching real hockey. No, 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 uh -oh. no. I'm just asking if you heard about it because remember it was a charity no, game. It's charity. Guys. And there was nothing but fights that ended up with a New York City firefighter knocking out a New York City police co uh, officer unconscious. <laughs> well, that is hockey. <laughs> On the, uh, unconscious, unconscious. This man was unconscious. Um, and then the other thing I wanted to talk about, since you were talking about fighting, was we've been talking about these slap tournaments. These slap tournaments that have been going around, people slapping each other. And now there's an yeah. arena touring um, tour where girls in bikinis slap each other as hard as they can in their asses. And I want to go. Big show. We go. When we go. <laughs> well. <laughs> How much of it's tickets? crazy because I, I haven't seen those. It just has brand the, new. It's brand new. I seen the fam. I seen the the female slap fest, right? And I told uh, earlier I was telling yeah, Yale yeah. that one woman was smaller. One was kind of built up, had a mohawk, looking tough like a wrestler. She smacked the shit out of the smaller one. Smaller one was like cool. She took it. You know they hold on to this thing. Like I, maybe it's to keep them right. I don't know. They hold yeah. on like this little. Thing or look like a rolling pen, but it's 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 cushion. <laughs> so then she said, "Okay, okay." Then she lined up, and you get I think you get two pumps, you know, maybe three. So you like you know you wind up a little bit. Then the third one, blah. So she fake, smacked fake the hit. shit out that yo. She smacked the shit out of that bigger woman. The woman stood up a little bit. Days stumbled forward, did a forward roll, and then they then they fight. He was like, yo, "Forward roll, I love it." I'm tough. It was hilarious, man. That's Yo, hilarious. hold on. One I, brought, I, brought my, I brought my neck this week, Big Show. <coughs> um, last, week, last week, I left it downstairs. <laughs> um, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe. Um, what were we talking about? Oh, the fighting. Yeah, you guys got to go check out that ass slapping tournament. It's pretty good. Um, I'm sure they will sell out. Yeah, you should. You got to watch that. <clears throat> we're all obsessed with butts. Anything new Let's in just the, admit it. Anything new in the uh, community this week? I'm not allowed to be put on the spot. Oh, it's okay. You don't got to be on the spot. I don't remember. 
Well, make sure you hit that like button. Shout out to everybody wa- listening. Um, we are live on YouTube video version, so you can see how handsome I am. Yo, that, yo. that wrong? You said you brought. Hey, you said you brought your neck. Yeah, I brought my neck this week. It's pretty good. Last <laughs> last week, last week it was straight up South Park. Yo, yeah. speaking Park. of South Park. Uh-oh. Speaking of yo. South Park. Jim Jones, the, the rapper Jim Jones, who who had the song Balling, who then for the last 20 years said Balling in every verse he put out since <laughs> since that song came out, says that grown men shouldn't watch cartoons. And I'm going to say, I think that's why. What do you think about that picture? Let me tell you. So I disagree with that because I don't really watch South Park, but I have watched some episodes of, um, of, um, uh, what's the Boondocks? two kids? Boondocks. So yeah. Mad Boondocks. I see Mad Boondocks. Now, I, listen, coming up, obviously, I watched, even as an adult, that, yo, some Tom and Jerry, Jerry pop on there right now. I love you know, I'm, 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 fr- I'm from the age of ass whippage. The Tom car Jerry. that we watched was straight ass whippage. So that's what we knew. I mean, we seen the Flintstones. Think about it. I seen grown men. My father be laughing at the Flintstones when they be on. Like yeah, my brother was smack. I watch cartoons. I watch The Simpsons. I think The Simpsons is the greatest television show of all time. Well, what's, pers- what's, pers- the car- what's the cartoon had Stu on it? Uh, Family Guy. Your homie was on yeah, there. That, I watched a few of them shits. That shit was stupid as hell. Like, that's, but I've, I don't, I don't watch stuff series wise. But I have seen some. Yeah, like, yeah. I like for, you know, for cartoon. Yeah, for cartoon. I like does. I could name like ten that I like. But yeah, like the Simpsons. Yeah. Like, no offense, Jim Jones. <laughs> the Simpsons will always be way bigger than you and way more important to American pop culture than balling. No offense. Yeah, you know, balling, <laughs> but, yo, ball, ball no offense. No offense. AKA that offense. Love workers just got drunk and they ball. So they. Hey, that's why it's easy for people to do it. And rich white people spending, right? Rich white kids spending money in college and shit and parties. Yeah, they yeah. was balling. They was balling at that time. So, you know, everybody took to that shit. But that's why I guess you call oh, things man. like that. Speaking of oh, balling. Yeah. Man, Uh-oh. I got my segue king, man. Uh-oh. If there's a segue award, I need it. Spe- Spe- <laughs> I can see the award now. He's on a segue. Speaking of balling, he, Burger says, king he says meatball. <laughs> Um, People. Aaron Rodgers just got signed to the Jets. Oh, so that finally happened. Yeah, it just happened. Yeah, he's over there now. He's over there. Oh, well, well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. So it's been much anticipated. He even said it himself on the podcast that he goes on that I'm going to the Jets. So yeah. it's been something that's been known for months. Uh, you got to make your, it's a smart thing for the Jets or whoever and him included to make your move now. Because the draft is uh, April 28th. You know what I mean? I believe it's April 28th. And now you got to know what position you're in. Um, I think it's a great move because I believe he still has something in him. And, and they're probably a quarterback away from being a great team. Because they were very good last year. But their quarterback play was the back of a mule. So, you know, it, it's, it was definite, definite ass. So with them having him, kudos to them. It's tough because it's in our division with the Patriots. So when we do our football thing, that'll be back around before you guys know in a couple of months. Um, yeah. You know, then we'll, we'll see how this thing shakes itself out. So, um, including, we... oh, shit, and, including um, you know, everything else that, that you know, the, the different changes in football and stuff. So good for them. And I hope that we do a lot better than being a Patriots fan. And I'm excited for football when it does come. So speaking of ball. Oh, go ahead. I was, I was going to do no, Go ahead. Go ahead. You know, this was still on bowling. Um, the, uh, shout out to the Celtics, who are up three and one on the Atlanta Hawks. Um, last night, as we hear this, last night, Jay, uh, um, Jalen Brown took off his mask that he had been wearing for because he had an injured face, um, and he dropped, I believe, twenty nine points. Uh, Jason Tatum led the way, I believe, with thirty one, but one at twenty seven, thirty one, and they're doing great. You know, that's the first round. Um, the winner of this series will play uh, Philadelphia, which swept Brooklyn out the house. So Philly is home resting, trying to get this stuff together. Uh, Let's talk about the Knicks, man, because as a lifelong Knicks fan, we don't have to go too deep in it because I, I know you don't give a shit about the Knicks, but as a lifelong Knicks fan and a bitter Knicks fan who got sick of, of the nonsense, 
I am happy that they're in uh, the playoffs and might win their first series in a decade. But it's decade. Kind of, it, 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 it's kind of like, damn, it's like, how much investment should I really put yeah, into it? We've been in this position you know before. And, and, and that's the well, bitterness of being the fan as to the point where the New York Knicks made me a LeBron James fan. That That's how okay. it all really came down to. I was like, man, I can't even do this shit anymore. What was going on so in basketball? Me, I'm going to watch this guy. <laughs> so let me tell you, when I was coming up, when I was coming up, I was a fan of basketball as I am now. Yeah. New York had an incredible team, you know, with um, Earl Monroe. Yeah, yeah. Clyde, uh, Clyde Frazier. Oh, yeah. Willis Reed. You know what I'm saying? They had some teams, so. It was before, was my, it was before my time, but I remember, I, I know of the team. And I was also a fan all the way up to Pat Ewing because, you know, him coming from, you know, they had, Mass. A, they had a great team and, there with Ewing and Starks, and, you know, right. even in the Houston Sprewell. So, era, they had good teams. They did. So what I'm what I'm saying is, so it's all about moving parts. After the part of having that great team with Ewing being the centerpiece and y'all didn't win shit, New York didn't win anything. So then it was doomsdays after that. You see what I'm saying? So right now, Sometimes, man, the, the, the pieces and the moves work. I mean, Jalen Brunson, uh, who's the main man over there now, the point guard, he was at Dallas, Luka Doncic, yep. which I don't know why he let him go, but he fitted. He fitted what they needed. Obviously, we're seeing it before our own, our yeah. very own eyes. The Knicks. He was he was a college <laughs> peak in college, playing for Kansas, I believe it was. And when he got to the pros, no one expected him to be what he is. But you usually, usually get to get a little more loose in the in the pros. So. Um, in that, in that, shout out to them. in those nineties, in that nineties Knicks team, though it was, uh, you know, fresh off three years of of Michael Jordan going to the finals, and you know they, there wasn't a Michael Jordan now, so they had their opportunity. They made it to the NBA Finals, and then they just, I feel like they just underestimated how good Hakeem Olajuwon was, and and, and it just didn't, they they didn't prepare for how good that guy was, and you know it, it was fucking. Well, I'm a Pressure. I'm gonna tell you like this, man. <laughs> so New York, I'm excited for them. I mean, of course, Boston fan, but I'm excited for them. Make it happen. Make Spike happy. Spike out there dressing with his little orange and blue shit on for years and whatever. So let, let's get it going. But they look like a legitimate team. So it's, it's it got to start somewhere. Um, I just and got, it's New York. It's the, I just got. You two, could do it. I just got two more things uh, after sports. So I think I feel like one of them is gonna be stupid as hell. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. But, I mean, it could be, but I just want to finish on this basketball thing while I'm here. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, Miami is up uh, on Milwaukee right now. Yeah. Uh, also, who do you got? We got... Um, Lakers are up on the Grizzlies. The Lakers are up. They play tonight. Um, Sacramento is tied with um, with uh, Golden State. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of interest in, in, um, in Denver. Uh, Minnesota staved off getting swept. Yeah. So Denver's up three to two on that. A lot of close shout games. A lot of close games last night too, like within a few points. Yeah. And shout out to also uh, hockey to the Bruins because uh, the Bruins they're up on and they're they're up three to one. One more win, then they move to the next series. But they've been playing been playing strong. And if anybody knows, they had the best record of the year. So I'm following them. And I and, feel like uh, they had the best with, record ever, right? Yes, ever, except. Yeah, yeah. Well, go ahead. What else would you want to say? Oh, so is that it? Is that it for sports? Um. Yes, nothing else great happened. Yeah. What else? So where were you? Oh, where were you on 420, 2023? Where were you, Big Shug, when blue checks became ing insignificant and did not mean anything ever again? <laughs> People were paying for that. But that shit was stupid, man. I just, you know, so I mean, hey. Elon Musk uh, bought Twitter for an, a crazy amount of money about a year ago or whatever. And, you know, he's been saying how he's going to switch the platform. Now you have to pay pay for your blue check. And now um, even Instagram has changed their policy now. Now all you have to do is pretty much all you have to do on Instagram is show them your license, have your name, not your at, but your name on your account be your mm -hmm. actual name that's on the license you show them and you're gonna mm -hmm. get you're gonna get your blue check there but twitter um oh, nice i didn't know that twitter is the create uh, see i don't want to put my real name on the things so i don't really, I, like this is why the blue check is insignificant now it don't matter anymore it's it's corny now 
The blue check has been mm. went from something that represented celebrity and fame yesterday or April nineteenth to anyone can get it. Is that what the you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yo, to incredible. I can make a big sugar page right now. I can go home or to the computer, make an Instagram page or, or Twitter page, big sugar, blah blah, whatever the thing's gonna say, and pay eight dollars, and it will say big sugar. No, Blue check mark. Because your name <laughs> your name's not gonna match. No, your ID's no not that's Twitter. Match. Twitter's eight dollars. Oh. Instagram is you have to show your show your show your real oh. shit. So whatever. Um I I just like verified, meaning like this is the person so, that you think it is, not like celebrity. Is celebrities it. hate Elon Musk. They they loved him two years ago, but now they hate him. Now he's a he's a hated person. You know, obviously for for, polit for political reasons. But there's been celebrities like Stephen King, LeBron James, who have been publicly bashing him forever, and now that blue check marks aren't cool, and anyone that has it on Twitter is a dork because they're paying for it. He. He took everyone's checks away. Everybody, bro. Gangstar. Go look on it right now. Gangstar. Blue check is gone. Everyone took him away. But all the people who have been dissing him, he kept their blue checks for them in the biggest troll move of all time. So I'm going to say that I just thought it was crazy because there's so many underground rappers like, oh, my man, I got to get that blue check. You know, and, and now now it's like anyone can get it. I think I think it's wild. And I just think... Um, I just wanted to know what so you what thought you're about. What you're saying it. is that we are a society addicted to status symbols. We are, we, you know, it, it, exactly it, what I'm saying. Yeah, it's out of control. <laughs> well, I don't so, know if it's out of control. I mean, it, it, it like was I, I see blue checks on Instagram. Like, Sorry. like people inbox me, hey, how much for Sorry. a video? And they have a blue check, and I'll go. They have 14 followers, and I'm like, <laughs> Don, you listen, listen. <laughs> and what you just said, out of you don't know if it's out of control. Yeah. Yeah, I, so what I, I'm, I'm not in that world. Like I, I think I, like no, I said, no, you like, wasn't catching. No, you was, wasn't catching it. Like I was saying, it was a yeah, I was purposely saying like control. <laughs> like so, a troll was it, that was part I was yeah, emphasizing. Yeah. But it's this out of control. That's what I was saying. But on another note, though, as far as balling too, uh -oh. Phil Jackson said that he doesn't watch the NBA anymore because he believes. The NBA um, shouldn't have slogans like Black Lives Matter and other things. Well, I guess Black la uh, black Basketball Lives Matter because he wants mad championships. Well, I don't know. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care about the, the, the slogans, really, but I, I don't think things should be politicized. Obviously, Black Lives Matter, 92% of the people that are playing the game are black people. Well, so, that's, so that's, <laughs> that's what it is. That's where the discrepancy comes in. Yeah. Because you're saying something like that, but you're the one coaching like all these 11 championships yeah, with I mostly think, black. I, I'm going to go ahead and, and I don't know Phil Jackson. I've never met him, but I'm going to go ahead and say that Phil Jackson is probably a Republican and he doesn't mm -hmm. want the, he doesn't like the politicized shit. So, and, and I'm not sticking up for him. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just kind of giving a, a, a side. Let me ask you. So are you familiar with Phil Jackson, anything about him? Or, he played for or the Knicks. Maybe, he played for the Knicks. Huh? He played for the Knicks. So, he got a whole bunch of rings. I know who Phil Jackson is. Yeah, yeah. No, no. So, but I'm saying, do you know about him? Like, do you know, like, what his form of coaching was and all of that? Yeah, like type. the triangle offense and all that shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, well, well, okay. So, the part you're missing that the triangle. To see. Wait, Illuminati. <laughs> I get it. No, no. <laughs> no what it is, is, so when he first came, it's probably documented in some of these movies and shit too. So when he first came, he was like this hippie dude. Yeah kind who was like a coach so he had tried did all, he did all kinds of different shit burning incense having dudes sitting in uh in, uh indian style right or whatever <laughs> praying to be just why wow, he was on some different shit so his approach was different you know what i'm saying it's yeah. like it's like aaron Rodgers. the dude's got this little side to him where aaron Rodgers, you're going to this dude interviewed him and he's over his house and they're both barefoot let's I don't need to come over your house and get barefoot and have interviews with you. So he, they some powwow Maybe type of Maybe he has some dudes. new rugs. <laughs> he I'm get nah. It's like DL sitting in front of me. It's like I'm sitting in front of DL. He's sitting in front of me and he's interviewing me and we're both barefoot. For what reason? <laughs> I like to be you know barefoot. That's sitting how in, I'm comfy. Uh, sitting Indian style. I don't understand. Some Nobody people like to <laughs> unloosen the belt, pop the button. I like to be Yo, comfy in my feet. Listen, <laughs> but that's cool. 
But I'm just saying, like, to like any interview you have, and you're just sitting up there, like, hey, you want to pop your shoes and socks off, bro? Nah, I'm good. We good. <laughs> but at the same what time, what if you were at the beach? Um, <laughs> what I was saying in a nutshell was like, you know, sometimes, man, sometimes, especially I see when people get older, they just, I think they, because of relevancy or whatever, they just feel like saying something that they, they know is going to get a response. Because it, it, because nobody gives a fuck. You made all this money, you, you, you. Ran, you you lived a charm life in, in your way. You what you got all these champions, you're legendary. So nobody doesn't really care what you what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. But when you do say something, they're gonna make something out of it. That's yeah, what you yeah. live in. So Yeah. But, um, I, I don't see like I, I thought that was a wild statement. I when I read that I was like, This isn't real, is it? And then I looked at the source and it was Sports Illustrated and I'm like, Wow. Cause sometimes you see shit on the internet, it's like Mel Gibson yeah, call, calls course. Morgan Morgan Freeman, this and it's like, <laughs> what? You know what I mean? You know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So, you always got to take everything you see online with a, with a grain of salt. But when I when I looked at the source, I was like, oh man, what a bonehead! What is wrong with this guy? But yeah, speaking of, speaking of boneheads, just, uh, is is right. is stupid as hell a rapper this week by any chance? Nah, but oh, go ahead. All you, right, you well then, fucking. Oh. What about your man Praz there? How come how come everyone in our in my generation of people have made it their identity to tell you how much of a rat? Takashi 69 is and how how much of a this and the is and how much of a that he is but I've seen not one not one have I seen post of someone sharing the link of Praz being a federal informant for the last 25 years why haven't I seen this <laughs> I mean I, I feel the same thing like I said there's no there's no honor against amongst men it's all bullshit like yeah. you know cause when I saw the story, first of all, it saddened me anyway because, uh, you know, at their heyday, the Fugees with Praz, Lauren Hill, you know, Wyclef, and then the, the, the people that were with them, Cannabis, um, yep. what's the other dude with the jail, for, uh, John Forte, yeah, you John know, Forte, yeah. so as you look what happened, excuse me, John Forte went to um, jail for quite some time. Was uh, this drug smuggling case? Yep, yep. Prod now coming out, I'm an informant. You know what I'm saying? Uh, y Club has been rolling, still being Y Club, whatever. But I'm just saying, so much crazy shit happened. And when you hear that story, I agree with you wholeheartedly because it's like this in, this internet and these people on the internet and in this, in this industry have uh, become normalized to snitch. Yeah. Like they they they're normalizing it, where it's like whatever because they seen what didn't happen or what doesn't happen to someone so, so for instance let's take this one Takashi 6 9 who claim he's a snitch or whatever all the dudes did was kick him and stomp him around they didn't kill him yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying some real live snitch dudes that I've heard of and know the story about them some of us have gotten their tongues cut out and yeah, their eyes definitely. take and their necks cut completely off so we, we're talking about some different we're talking about some uh, just find it social media Crazy how, how how quiet. Oh well, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna share this link because I like the Fujis, so I can't admit to not liking the Fujis. Basically, if I share this link, so I'm just gonna go back to saying how this guy Takashi 69 with purple hair is a snitch. He's but, so you know, and yeah, I know no one's favorite pros bar. <laughs> no one's favorite uh, song Nobody. verse was ever prozes. I get it. Even on Ghetto Superstar, no one's Dope. favorite part was Praz. They don't remember that part. I don't remember that part. Come on, man. Uh, they, that's why yes I was. They a, do. That's, that's why I was hey, in yes the form. There's <laughs> around the border like Cassius Clay. Yes, oh, yeah. sir. <laughs> yeah, they, 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 they just proved that they did. <laughs> but yeah, so, I'm mad at you. I just around the corner like Blast. <laughs> yeah. So 20, 25 years ago Make was 1998. Again. So in mm. in 1998, they Praz, were still popping. Praz still was a federal informant for the fucking FBI. In 1998. Is that how his boy went away? What year did the score come out? They were popping. They, but they was they was popping out. They were definitely because... popping because the score came out. Then Miseducation came out. And then the yeah, carnival yeah. came out. The score, so, I used to rock it in college. And so, I graduated. So in that time of popping, as Big Shook's saying, in the popping era of the Fugees, Praz yeah. was going from the stage to, to inform the FBI of this or that. And they talk about the hip hop police. That's the hip hop police are real. The hip hop police are fake. I'm gonna go out on a limb right now <laughs> and say that the hip hop police are absolutely, real, absolutely real. 
because you're looking at a guy who in the heyday of it 1998 my personal opinion i know it it, rec- it, it reflects on my age but to me 1998 was the dopest <laughs> year in hip hop like the dopest shit came out that year you, like and i feel the like. funny thing you said that is because i started a rap the, the funny thing about it is that what you say, so we're on tour, uh, smoking rules and all that around that time. And and also You went on we the carnival that, tour. Uh, yeah, we yeah, we went on the carnival yeah. tour after. So I was on the carnival tour and couldn't even remember. That's where I told you it uh cannabis looked like he's about to be lying much. Yeah. But um all of a sudden and also oh, John Forte yeah, when he was rocking on Nick, he had his album out. Uh, y Clef drove through the crowd on a little black scooter dressed like a ninja, you know, to the state. I mean, it's like, yo, so I remember that show. Right, like, so, I mean, that's- so here's a here's a question. Here's a question we have that I just thought of right now. Was, was, Praz, was Praz involved with the John Forte shit, didn't go to jail with John Forte because he turned informant? Like, uh, I can't. So what the story's supposed to be is that. There was, there was these women that were supposedly paid a thousand dollars a piece or so. This is the story, you know, um, to to bring this coke. I guess it was liquefied or whatever. Yeah, it was yeah. hydrogen. The John Forte shit, yeah. Yeah, to bring it on the plane. And when they got popped, they supposedly just rolled right over on them. You know what I'm saying? So because it's like, listen, you can go at that time. Even more so, you would go to jail for twenty years for peace. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm wondering if it was really two people, and one of them took the deal, one of them didn't. One went to prison, and one was like, "Yeah, I'll I'll be an informant. I'll keep being famous." Where's ODB? But you know, do you, do you, <laughs> you, know do you remember? Do you remember all the powerful people that John Forte had coming to his uh his his rescue? Like it was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like he had some people that like big big wigs. That was like supporting him, free John. Um, they, it, they, see, they weren't black dudes that go on, uh, running around with t-shirts that said that they were just saying it because yeah. they had the power. You know, say Carly Simon was one of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just you just did so, that, and it, that, that that's another point I was gonna go make. It's like, man, it it, it couldn't have happened to a, a a worse group that it could have happened to because this was the group that was like the refugees and we're against the right. police and we're against right. the, the, the government yeah. and, and politics and this and that. And then to mm. one third of the group is a actual federal. I got, I wish I had the score here with me, right? I, here I mean, somewhere. I mean, but the, I'm going to look right now. He was an actual it, federal it, informant. That's wild to me, dude. Crazy thing about it. It is read and it is said and it is written. Now here's the crazy part about it. Cause then they have a picture of him smiling and walking and this is the storyline underneath of course they so put that, that picture it's crazy man but like, like i said they normalize so many things get normalized you know what i mean and that's what uh, that's snitching is another one of them so you know it's 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 sad you know i'm always going to keep my code of ethic i mean it is what so, it is to me i, I didn't want to talk you know about I, mean? I didn't want to talk about this publicly but i got hired to do an album i did an album for a rap group this was recently they they hired me to do an album they they paid for features this and that and um, I, 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 <laughs> I mixed the album. The album's ready to come out. Uh, I'm driving to New York City, and I get a text from a random, or a message from a random person, and it's paperwork on one of the guys from the group. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, mm. wow, wow, what is this? Because I, I don't know these guys like that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, wow, what, what is this? Mm. So um, come, come to find out that this guy, this guy had paperwork on him. So. I said to the group, I said, hey, listen, this is what's happening. I'm not fucking with this. I'm not fucking with you guys. I know it was just one person, but, you know, this is what it is. And t- two of the people were, like, in agreement that it was terrible and that's, that's a no-no. And, and two of the people were like, oh, well, I don't care. And so, you know, I, I cut ties. And, but it, 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 ha- it happens all the time. And. And I'm and I, and I'm blown. So I deleted all the songs, you know, obviously. So I kept the features, bang, uh, free, free features. So um, allegedly, I allegedly. So I, I had a, a eye-opening experience, like you're saying, like you don't care about this. Like, what do you yeah. mean? Like, what do you mean you don't care about this? So, so it was it was just interesting to me. Yeah. Nobody knows the pressure. No, nobody knows knows the pressure until the pressure is applied. 
You know what I'm saying? So if they catch themselves in them pressure, situations, pressure. there's pressure. A lot of those motherfuckers start telling and rolling. So if they're going to be about it, you got to be about it. But as we're seeing now more and more, people ain't really about it. Yeah. You know, it just it is now too. It's a shame, but not me. So hey, whatever, man. Y'all motherfuckers stay over there. You know, um, but now. Uh oh. It's Neo. time. Oh, shit. It's that time of the week? Time. Oh, man. Shout out to Chip Fu. Shout out to Chip Fu. Chip Fu. Um, that was a good interview. That was fun. But Jack Fu. the best part of the week is always stupid as hell. Bam, 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 bam. Stupid as hell. <laughs> so this week, three NFL players were suspended indefinitely Friday for betting on NFL games in the 2022 season. Why two other players, including the 12th overall draft pick of a year ago, received six game suspensions for betting on non-NFL games at a league facility, which is all this stuff is against the rules. Detroit Lion wide receiver Quintez Cephas, Lion safety C.J. Moore, and Washington Commanders defensive end Shaka Tony are sidelined for the entire 2023 season and may petition for reinstatement afterwards usually after a year. Lions wide receiver Stanley Berryhill and Jamison Williams each received six-game suspension, though they will be able to participate in off-season and preseason activities, including preseason games. Their suspensions will start at the final roster cut down. So, to me, this is the reason why this is stupid as hell. First of all, it's such a hard and long road to get yourself in that league, the NFL. You know what I'm saying? Everybody in the league is not a superstar. The career is uh, expectancy is three to five years. You know what I mean? So that's, you know, on the high side, probably. So you're in there, man. You know, you got to get out there. That's that's how it works. And people's mindsets, I believe some of them feel like, well, I'm not starting. Well, how long am I going to be here? How can I keep myself making money? Or whatever, and they start doing stupid shit like this because they think they're slick too, and everything's easy to do on Short phones cut. and app. Yeah, you know what I mean. So, so <clears throat> it's really the other guys got six years. Three of the guys got cut, so they're basically like you're off the team. You know what I mean? And yet, because you just made a, a a stupid, it's a stupid mistake for where you're at. It's like if you can't uh, take with the hormones and human growth hormones and all that in baseball and they catch you and you get that 50 game suspension maybe you're stupid as hell because you know maybe you they got saying? an addiction so, big shook they addicted to gambling well so it is a here's disease. The, well with them they might not be addicted but here's the problem here's the problem so now it's easy to do so you think it's easy money and nev- nothing is that comes easy is respected nothing money or anything or whatever you build yourself career nothing that's not respect if it's easy because yeah. that shit's temporary. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That easy shit is temporary, man. You know, even if you met a woman and, you, you, and it was easy to get with her and y'all, you know, uh, uh, commence and have sex or whatever, right? First date, Kate. That, that won't last long. Yeah. Because that's how that shit is. That's how, oh whatever's boy. easy is not respect. So what I'm just saying is Ladies, to the three NFL that's players who were suspended for the whole year and the other two, once again, Wide receiver Quintez Cephas, Lion Safety CJ Moore, and Washington <laughs> defensive end Shaka Tony, um, and also Stanley Berryhill and Jamison Williams. You guys are stupid as hell. <laughs> now, here's the chance. You know, you might have a chance to be reinstated, and you might be able to, you know, get yourself moved further in your career, or, you know, it, or that could be it. But hopefully, you do get a second chance because you're young and you're learning. But you're right young now. And dumb. Y'all was stupid as hell. Fucking idiots. <laughs> wow. So yeah. I just want to say something real quick. Um, shout out to all the behind the scenes, yeah. behind the scenes people. Like Big Show, you were talking about the uh, militia video earlier. You know about the fighting in the video. I guarantee you there was a whole bunch of people behind the scene making sure that that video was dope as fuck. Not just the guy holding yeah. the camera. You know what I'm saying? Actors, well, here- stunt coordinators, th- th- this and that. So I just want to give a, sh- uh, a rest in peace shout out to my homie Thick Man. He died this uh, a couple days ago at, at this point. And <clears throat> mm. I had a movie called The Sea of Green. You know, it's a cult classic. I don't know if you've ever seen it, Suge, but it's a cult classic. Yeah, M- millions probably. of people have watched this movie. It's it's one of the, the you know, the 
I don't know, pr- prides of my career. Like I wrote, directed, and made a movie. You know what I'm saying? And um, mm-hmm. Thick Man, that, that that was my homie. Like, we shot the 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 climax of that movie in California, so I needed m- more guns than I had. You know what I'm saying? I, I needed I needed people to play DEA agents. I needed people to play this. I needed people to play that. And he really helped bring that final scene to that movie alive, alive. You know what hey. I mean? And oh, go ahead. No, rest in peace. But uh, rest in peace to him. But you should have called on me for the gunplay. Well, go ahead. <laughs> well, the 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 scene was specifically uh, in the northern California. It was hills. in California. You know what I'm saying? It was it was in the forest in Cali. So we c- you can't you can't fake that unless unless you go there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, gosh, I'll just take a car and meet you there. <laughs> well, go ahead. So it was one of the dumber, looking back at it, it was one of Is the... Is this your... Well, go ahead. Go. was the dumber things because we used a thousand rounds of live ammo, hour, an hour and a half at least from any sort of help. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So It was very well planned. It was, it was planned, but it was just... You know, it was just dumb. You know, like looking but, back at but, it. Looking back person, at the Alec Baldwin situation. Out. <laughs> Yo, for a person knows what it is to live in the wilderness right it's probably understood you know what I'm saying? yeah well <laughs> and it's not me it's a different so, li- yeah, yeah. It's, yeah it's a different life out there but i i just wanted to uh, say rest in peace to him because a lot of the rest time like you know people only really care about the lead singer in the band and and, and you right. know what i'm saying this and that but there's a whole bunch of people right. behind the scenes that make that shit pop and he was one of those dudes so rest in peace man Rest in uh, peace. And, and uh, one more thing too, uh, I want to say, uh, give a shout out to the people who uh, who uh, purchased the Gangstar uh, merchandise for the Moment of Truth. Oh, hey. uh, and it was very successful, man. And we, we got some new things coming along too. Um, also, um, May 11th. May 11th. You get me, Cormega, um, Black Medine, and Black Poet. At the Middle East, Cambridge, uh, downstairs. Um, that'll be on a Thursday, 5, 5 11, 23. So come through, man. We're going to rock. I know I'm going to burn it up, too. Uh, also, coming up after that, we've got... Um, June 10th. Uh, uh, June 10th. It's a block party in Roxbury, uh, Nubian Square, uh, formerly Nubian Notion area in, in Down W, where um, it'll be a, a retrospect. You know, and Guru, uh, a tribute to Guru, so to speak. There'll be hip hop, there'll be performances by myself, uh, DJ Perman, uh, Ed OG, um, and also a group, Planet Patrol, from back in the day. And there'll be break dancing and different other uh, hip hop activities going on. It'll be a great day. It'll be from 1 to 6, June 10th. So that's the Guru tribute, save the date, come through. Shout out to Kai and Chris. And buy black the bu- excuse me, buy black. Uh, uh, it got me tongue twisted. <laughs> buy tongue back twisted, the block. Tongue tied. Hey, buy back the block movement. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Say that five times. Uh, we appreciate that. Y'all come through, man. For real, it's, it's gonna be dope. All that's just gonna be dope. All right. Until then, excuses have no purpose, so don't make them. Don't, don't make, make them. them. And as we grow, we glow. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we're at the number sixty-six. And we're in the books. Peace. Peace. On my dark days. On my dark days, I chopped crack on the regular. Ran up in spots and clapped on the regular. Took big fat ass stacks from the register. No matter how hard they tried, they still couldn't measure the hard I have.